We are back into the park. It is day four in my little mini solo trip vlog. So today we have something very exciting going on. I have signed up for a tour to tour the Disney Railway and hopefully, weather permitting, I get to ride the Lily Bell. So that is super exciting. Generally speaking, I think they do say in the app that if it's too hot, they you might be able to just get on it. There, you know, the train won't be running. Fingers and toes crossed. The weather is beautiful. It is not too hot. So hopefully by the time my reservation is being called at 1 p.m. that I get to still ride the Lily Bell around. I think it's a two-hour walking tour. Additionally, tonight there is the uh, Disneyland after hours. I think it's Pride night tonight. I don't know. I might uh, just check out the wait time a little bit while I'm here. Um, I'm still pretty early and just to see if it's really if you know during a party day or a uh, after hours day would be a good time to visit the park. I'm gonna kind of walk around and uh, show you what it looks like and here is sort of the crowd situation as I'm standing on the platform of the Disneyland railway. So we're gonna be back here in a little bit and we'll take you along. Last time I was here, this area, this whole town hall area, including Walt's apartment, was pretty much covered like the tarp that's over there. But now it is all open back up again. Uh, looks looking nice and refreshed and refurbed. Uh, all the paint looks great. And uh, yeah, let's check out Walt's apartment on top of the Disneyland fire department. Yep, his light is still on. So last time I was here, not too long ago, we did a tour of Walt's apartment as part of the Main Street uh, story tour. I highly recommend that. So today we get to do the railway tour and check out the Lily Bell. So super excited. Actually, surprisingly on a Tuesday, this is a very, it's like a, it's very, very busy actually. Alice in Wonderland, we've got 30 minutes. Big Thunder is 45. Buzz Lightyear is 30. Yeah, the line was out the door. And let's see, what, what do we have the highest right now? Indiana Jones Adventures, 50, not surprising. Uh, what are my other heavy hitters? Matterhorn is 50. Peter Pan's is 45, that's, I mean, it, that's not that bad. Ooh, okay, Rise of Resistance, that's coming up to be 70. Yeah, so for a party day, I guess, everybody's trying to probably get in their rides before the park is shutting down a little bit earlier today, so. Yeah, it's a, it's not a, not a light crowd crowd by any means, especially for a Tuesday. So yeah, there you have it. Ooh, we have a line for a princess. I wonder who that is. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, and then Captain Hook is just hanging out by sleeping or yeah, Snow White's wishing well over there. Okay. Yeah, like I said, today the park is pretty busy, especially given the fact that. The park is closing early, so folks are folks are showing up. I mean, the weather is really, really nice, so I don't I don't blame them. You know, what a great day, good good way to spend your Tuesday morning or Tuesday in uh, <laughs> in Disneyland, right? All right, onward to the front of the park. You got a friend in me. What? As much as I want to stay and watch Zephyr dance perform along with the Disneyland band and our favorite characters, it is almost time for me to go and check in for my tour. In case you need this information for your next tour in Disneyland, the tour check-in area is pretty much right by the entrance to Disneyland. Since I'm already in the park, it's this little gazebo right by the City Hall on Main Street and to the right of the Disneyland Main Street Railroad Station. We are all checked in and ready to go. Apparently, there is a, it comes with cinnamon roll and orange juice. That's nice. And then they give you this like, nice little commemorative little pin with your name on it and it's got the tour thank you harry oh of my course. gosh this is great so oh my gosh and then it has caramelized apples on top Ooh. so it is very delicious i hope you enjoy okay? thank you i'm gonna grab a napkin though <laughs> wow that is nice all right i haven't really had food yet or lunch so this will be a perfect little snack with my orange juice apple and orange that's uh, what can be better than that Ooh, this is warm oh my gosh <laughs> 
it's, it's a warm apple pie. <laughs> they didn't warn you that it was going to be a warm, it's aluminum, so just be careful when you're when you come to the store and come and grab it. <laughs> okay, editor Jen here. So, what did I think about the Disneyland Railroad guided tour? Well. I certainly have some thoughts. Whether or not it's worth the price of admission, well, as I always say, your mileage can certainly vary by a lot. Let's face it, this tour is pretty expensive. Not the most expensive, but is definitely up there. This, this one clocks in at $135 per guest, but if you have a Disney Visa card, there is a bit of a discount associated with it. So I actually paid around $115 plus tax as a Visa card holder. So at this price point, who do I think would really enjoy it? Well, if you're into trains, a Disney fan who is into the historical stuff, or a Disney fan who is into the historical stuff and trains, well, you are in for a treat. And you guessed it, I squarely fall into this category. One of the main draws of this tour for me personally, other than learning some of the fun train-related facts that your tour guide may share with you as you walk through various parts of Disneyland, is of course to be able to ride in the Lilybell presidential car. But we will get to that in a little bit. By the way, this tour has a pretty strict 24-hour cancellation policy. Full price will be charged and forfeited if um, a guest cancels within one day or are a no-show for the reservation. I actually don't think that this tour is super challenging to book and I've actually been able to find open reservation spots pretty consistently. But if you're thinking about going, the advice is always trying to book ahead. Now our tour was pretty full, probably close to 10 guests. Our tour started in front of Main Street Station. The front half of the tour was largely for the trainers. Um, there were a lot of details about engine models and locomotive companies that were sort of above my knowledge base, but there were also a lot of interesting tidbits about how trains figure into the Disney lore, like how Walt first drew Mickey Mouse on a train to Los Angeles, and how Imagineers who were also train enthusiasts share their backyard train setups with the boss and inspired Disney to build his own ride-on train in his backyard. In fact, we had learned that he actually had to move houses to fit it in. The train line was, of course, called the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad, named for the street that Walt and his family lived on. And the locomotive was named the Lilybell after Walt's wife, Lillian Disney. We learned that the Lilybell that exists in the park today was actually modeled after the Lilybell at the Disney's house, but it actually wasn't installed until 1976, 10 years after Walt Disney's death. Lillian Disney oversaw the creation of the train car and it has her personal touches like the prized roses she grew as decor accents throughout. Before riding the Lily Bell, we actually got to see some backstage stuff um, getting to go into an area right behind the Small World attraction and took a quick peek at something called the Roundhouse where the trains are kept. Now we actually didn't get to go too close to the Roundhouse and had to stand behind a safety line, but knowing me, anytime we get to go to do something that is not open to the public per se, I'm always absolutely thrilled. But then it's actually something that you can already see even if you're not on this tour. But I'll share more on that in the maybe this tour isn't necessarily for me section. Now comes the main event. So we boarded at Toontown Station because it's fully accessible. Stepping into the car, which I'd hoped to do so for so long, felt like a huge deal. So inside, there are plush red velvet chairs and couches. Some bought at auction from the Queen Mary before Disney owned the ship and tried to make a haunted mansion at sea. There are also Victorian-inspired touches like antique glassware and a rose-embroidered sunscreen, as well as portrait of Walt and Lillian Disney on display. As we rode, our tour guide gave us even more information about the Lilybell. So it was installed as a presidential parlor car to host VIPs. Our guide said a former president of Japan and members of the British royal family had taken the Grand Circle tour in it. The ride was absolutely lovely and magical, but it was really quite short. And before I knew it, uh, we had made the full 18 minute loop and it was time to leave. We also got a keepsake print of the Disneyland Railroad and off we went. So who do I think this experience might not be for? $435 if you don't have any discount, the whole experience started out with um, orange juice and a pretty delicious pastry, as you saw. The tour ended with our keepsake print with some walking, fun facts about Disneyland, the Disney family, the trains, with a grand tour around Disneyland in the Lily Bell. Is that worth it to you? Also, and they do tell you about this on the website, that depending on the weather, you may or may not get to ride in the presidential car because it could get too hot. And even when we went, it was actually pretty hot and stuffy in there for sure. So our cast member let us know that booking an earlier reservation time, especially in the summertime, is high highly recommend it. So certainly keep that in mind. So back to my original point, if you're not a Disney history buff and or love trains, 
this might not necessarily be for you. And the ride in the Little Bell itself is really only 18 minutes at the end of the tour. And remember what I said about the whole backstage roundhouse area, right? Well, you actually don't have to pay extra. When you take the monorail or the Disneyland Railroad, you can actually see as much of the roundhouse as we saw on the tour. So when you get to Tomorrowland and are approaching Autopia, look left instead of right, and you'll see a big green building with train tracks leading into it. And then as far as the caboose goes, you can find it. There are actually trains with cabooses attached to it. And yes, you can ride it. It's not the Lily Bell, but it's certainly open to guests. So is it worth it? Well, my answer is, as I do in all of my other review videos, it really depends on your budget, your interest, and all of that. I enjoy the experience a lot, but probably not in a hurry to shell out the money again anytime soon. We just finished the railroad tour. Hopefully you found that to be helpful. I guess I will see you in my next vlog. Talk to you soon.